Hi there, I'm Heather Gill, local realtor here in DFW with EXP Realty, and I'm talking with Lori Van today. She's the owner of Van and Associates. Uh, they're in Louisville, right? That is correct. All right, you guys uh, do coaching, counseling, and consulting. Of course, they, they service the whole Metroplex, of course. Uh, Lori, thank you for being on. We have a question that's come in through TexasElder.care, and the question is this. As a caregiver, how do you talk with your children about what is happening with their grandparents? Well, first you have to look at not just chronicle age appropriateness, but also emotional maturity appropriateness. Mm -hmm. Just because someone is a certain age doesn't mean that cognitively or emotional maturity is going to match up with that. Right. There are lots of different books that can help with that or or different also support groups too but if it's say a younger child we're looking at maybe that nine and younger ten and younger you're wanting to keep things very simplistic don't get into a lot of medical jargon mm -hmm. don't give them gory details uh, because they're not going to be able to comprehend it and you don't know also how a child interprets things it makes something much bigger and much scarier than what it is right. to the point where maybe then they become even scared mm -hmm. to see that grandparent because they have this image of like, oh my gosh, they're going to have tubes out everywhere. And that sounds terrible. Right. The older they are, you can start, well, using their academics as a guideline. Mm -hmm. By the time someone's in high school, they've had biology. Mm -hmm. yeah, they can understand the parts of the body and what works and what doesn't. Right. Again, still don't go into the medical jargon piece of it. Keep it simple. Allow them to ask questions. Say, you know what? You might have noticed that grandpa lately has had some struggles speaking mm -hmm. and isn't forming the words and is forgetful. And do you know why that might be? So allow them to answer the questions okay? Or, and to ask again, allow them to ask the questions. That's so, so important. And if they go, well, no, I'm not really sure. It's just something I've noticed, but I figure it's just they're getting old and go, well, yes, that's true. That, that can happen as we get older, but they've been diagnosed. They've been given a, a diagnosis of, let's say, Alzheimer's. And do you know what that word means? Um, I've heard, sort of heard stuff about, but I don't really understand it. Okay, well, this is what Alzheimer's is. And so you can go through and explain some of the symptoms of it. Uh, likewise, if they've had a stroke, say, well, you know, when you meet grandma again, you know, she's had a stroke, this is what it means. And you try to prepare them for it. Say, you might bring things up and grandma's not going to remember those things. Right. And that doesn't mean she doesn't care or doesn't love you. That just means that her mind, her memory just isn't able to bring up that memory. Right. That her brain got hurt by the stroke. So those are some general guidelines. And... If you're not quite sure, that's where counseling really can help out a family in this transition time. Or if they notice that someone in the family is really struggling with coming to grips of, I realize I'm gonna lose my grandparent. And I've counseled a whole lot of teenagers that have really been impacted by the loss mm -hmm. of their grandparent. And it is important to get them help to process that impending situation, that passing, and also to process the passing once it occurs. Right. So Lori, those are good things, absolutely. And uh, you know, especially for the younger ones, they, they probably would be afraid. They probably would have questions. Uh, they definitely wouldn't quite understand what's going on. Um, so having, having that age appropriate discussion, I think is super important. And then um, having a lot of grace with people too, you know, cause there's a lot of chaos that usually goes on when there's a decline like that mentally or physically or even emotionally within a family. So just being patient, being kind, offering grace to all the family members involved and offering, you know, and just especially those younger ones, cause they're, 
they just, they're just there, you know, they're just doing the best they can and they love their grandparents, you know, very much. So those are definitely some good tips, good things to know about. And, you know, counseling is not a bad idea in, in that situation at all, because things like that could be very traumatic for a family. Uh, so Lori knows what she's doing. She's a professional. She, she does this kind of thing for a living and she's very adept, her and her associates at helping people with this kind of thing. Um, their office numbers there on the screen and you can also reach her via email. Lori, I appreciate your time so very much. You're very welcome.